I think sometimes we get in this mood where we just have to, we just have to party. Sometimes we just have to celebrate. And we look for excuses, right? We just, I, I don't know if you've ever been in this mood. Sometimes I get in this mood. Like, I, I need an excuse. I need to be around people. I want to celebrate. I'm not quite sure why, but I just I want to party. And I remember one such occasion where an occasion like that happened, and it was one of the greatest celebrations, the greatest parties I'd ever been a part of. It was in 2005, and I was a junior in college seminary on the campus of the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. And St. Thomas is a university, it's about 10,000 undergraduates and 100 of us were college seminarians. In the spring of that year, you may recall, St. John Paul II passed away. And it was within a little over a week that Pope Benedict XVI was named our next Pope. It was kind of halfway through the semester, things were dragging on, we were all like sad uh, because of the death of St. John Paul II, and he had been, for those of us, at that time, he'd been our, our Pope for, all of our, for our entire life. We'd really never known a different Pope. And so the priest in charge of the seminary kind of saw that like the students, the seminarians, we were just kind of dragging, and so he called some of us in, into his office in the seminary and said, look, we need to do something. We have a new pope now. What should we do? We're a Catholic university. We're a seminary. We should do something to commemorate this. So I actually uh, suggested something really dumb. He's like, I was like, let's have a panel discussion on the theology of Benedict XVI and talk about all of his theology as Cardinal Ratzinger. And the priest was like, that's stupid. No, we're not doing that. And he said, like, Guys, this is the first time in your life you've seen a new pope. This is the first time in the life of the students on campus that they will see a new pope. We've got to do something. We've got to have a party. So we did. And we kind of threw all caution, all expense to the wind. Um, and, and it was. It was this wonderful event. It was on a Tuesday afternoon and evening. Uh, we went out and um, spent thousands of dollars. We rented a stage and this enormous sound system. We threw this party on campus without the permission of the university who afterwards tried to fine us for doing this. But we had this enormous sound system and we brought in St. Paul police, St. Paul, Minnesota, because they had dog sniffing German shepherds, right? And Pope Benedict was a German pope and so he was our German shepherd and so St. Paul police came in and did a German shepherd dog show uh, he took the name of Benedict XVI, so we had this sweet 16 volleyball tournament. We bought all these volleyball nets, set them up on campus in the quad. Uh, and if you won the tournament, you got these t-shirts uh, that was mostly irreverent. It said, who's your daddy? And it said, Papa Benedict on the back. Um, we got these German restaurants to donate a couple thousand bratwursts. Uh, and so we, like, hot dog eating contests were, like, on ESPN in those days. And so we had these bratwurst eating contests. Uh, and we got kegs of German root beer. Uh, we had all sorts of just stuff, relays. Uh, we rented a golf cart and, and a, a, the Pope's cassock. And so we would dress up seminarians those few days ahead of time in the cassock and decorated this golf cart as the Pope mobile. They'd go around campus advertising this party and you could take a picture with the Pope. It was crazy, it was nuts and ridiculous. But we just needed a party and we needed an excuse for it. And a couple thousand students, it was just a blast. It's a lot of fun. And sometimes you just have to have a celebration, get in those places and you need an excuse to do it. And the election of a Pope, while momentous, was as good as any. In our gospel today, our Lord gives us perhaps the greatest excuse, his mercy. And he cites in his three parables that every time someone repents, there is a party. There is an occasion of celebration. In those first two parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, he says, heaven rejoices over one repentant sinner more so than over 99 righteous people have no need of repentance. That there's this party in heaven that happens every single time. Someone comes to our Lord and repents and asks, asks for his mercy. 
Then he gives one of the most famous parables, the prodigal son. Right? And the son walks away, wastes and squanders all of his inheritance on a life of dissipation. And instead of returning to condemnation and shame, he returns to a father's love who, that is so deep that he has this unprecedented party. He tells his servants, put the finest robe on him, put a ring on his finger, put sandals on his feet, slaughter the fattened calf who I have never even slaughtered for my other son. And let's have a party because of this repentant sinner, because of God's mercy. Guys, we come up with all sorts of reasons to have parties, and rightfully so. There are many occasions that call for celebration, and it is the appropriate thing to do. Sometimes you just need an excuse to get together with people. Sometimes you just need an excuse to get together and celebrate. And if you're in that mood this year, today, tomorrow, next week, this past year I have had the privilege and honor of hearing 970 confessions. I don't keep track of the sins, but I keep track of the number of confessions. Because each and every single one of those is an occasion for celebration. Each and every single confession is an occasion to rejoice in a Father's love that is so deep and so profound for us that He runs straight out of heaven to meet us with His mercy and embrace us as His son, as His daughter. If you're looking for an excuse to have a toast with friends, to just get together, you could do worse than toasting and celebrating to God's mercy. In fact, you could never do better than to join in heaven's celebration of the bestowing of God's mercy.